Welcome guys, this is another quick tutorial on how to use ESXi. In this particular case, um, I want to add additional data store off of a new hard disk that I've installed in my ESXi uh, virtual host. Um, so I added an SSD um, you know, to add some fa shared file storage for uh, my fiance um, for, so she can store all of her important files on the network and access them off any computer. Uh, we'll map it to her drives and her profile so it roams with her. Um, also going to be used in a SQL database store. Obviously SSD is significantly faster than a um, spinning hard disk or a disk with a spindle. So I wanted to also utilize it for that. So at this point, I'm going to assume you've already physically installed the hardware in the computer. So you've opened up the case, you know, hooked up, you know, your SATA adapter um, or whatever you're using, SAS, whatever it happens to be. Um, you've attached that, and the hardware is actually already installed in the computer. So this is just going to deal with actually assigning it as a data store inside of ESXi. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go over to the configuration tab. It'll come up this usually showing the, the you know different components in your device um, software components. What we're looking for in this case is storage. So uh, right now I just have a 500 gigabit disk, gigabyte disk in here. Um, there isn't much space space free on it, and I can I just want something quite a, bit, a little bit faster than a spinning spinning disk. So in this case I'm going to add storage. And since it's already attached, this is going to be considered essentially um, local SCSI disk. Um, it's not on the network file system. It's a local disk, so you're not attaching from like a SAN or a LAN using that as a data store. So we're going to choose disk one. So actually here you actually can see the uh, SSD listed here already. So we're going to choose that and you know, choose next. So it's going to be, you have to choose the type of file system. Uh, unless you have any special reason you want to go with VMS or VMFS5. And it's going to save the whole disk of use and wipe the disk out and assign it um, over to, you know, uh, the VM as data store. So we choose next. So we'll call it. It's kind of the name of the disk, what it is. So, data store name. We're going to use the whole data, the whole disk as the data store. We don't want to like reserve any portion of it. And we will finish. So it's going to bring in this data store. So now I can see I have a second, a second actual disk as a data store. So if you go back to my summary screen, now we do show uh, this second device in here as an SSD assigned to this uh, ESXi host. So obviously I want to now utilize this. So I'm going to, in this case, I'm going to assign some of it to this and some of it to my NNP server. Um, so say we'll, we'll show you how to access this and add it in Windows. So we're going to edit the settings because you want to assign uh, part of this hard disk in. So right now hard disk one, it's actually um, <coughs> part of you know, hard disk one is essentially the uh, data store that's on the spindle disk that was already installed. So we're going to add a second hard disk into this machine. So we're going to choose add. We're going to choose hard disk because we want to add another hard disk. So we're going to create a new virtual disk. We're going to say disk size. And I'm going to thick provision um, 25 gigabytes for her, her data store. So it's just, you know, documents, Word documents. This should be plenty of space for that. So we're going to continue on. And it's going to let you choose um, the options for this virtual disk. We don't really need to change this. Sorry, data store. I think we do need to change the data store. So actually, yes, sorry, we do need to change the data store. So the data store is going to be this Kingston SSD. Sorry about that. So I'm going to thick provision it, and I'm going to specify 
the data store. So in this case, it's the Kingston SSD that I have. <clears throat> and there we go. So now it's going to show you that it's actually stored in the Kingston SSD. So we're going to finish. So it's adding a new hard disk. So we'll choose OK. So it's in there. So now if we go to edit the settings again, you'll see hard disk 2, which is even tells you what data store it's on. So you see the first one is on the hard drive, second one is on the SSD. Alright, so then we're going to, that should at this point have the data new data store assigned to this v, uh, VM. There's a virtual machine. So we'll open the console, we'll let it boot up. And while that's starting, I'm actually going to boot up a couple of my other devices here. Power on my VPN server. And it's also, also note it's important to do this um, while the machine, all your, your VM hosts, when are off, I wouldn't bother adding data stores to them on. Technically, you can, it shouldn't impact anything, but I just like to do it with everything off. So, we'll wait for this to uh, come up here. It's going to take a bit of time to start up. There we go, we're getting the Windows boot screen. Man, this is slow with my screen capture software. Good enough. So Windows is starting. So obviously this can be using quite a bit of the uh, host machine getting everything running here. Yeah, you can definitely tell. It's really, uh, really taxing the machine in that regard. But that's okay. We'll give it some time for everything to boot up. Uh, Windows is still loading. Which is to be expected. Um, this host machine really isn't all that powerful that I'm running it on. Um, it's just a Sandy Bridge G620, so it's basically a Pentium for Sandy Bridge Pentium. Um, so it's a dual core machine. Um, it has, uh, at this point, 8 gigabytes of RAM, but I have another stick coming to bring up to 16 gigabytes. Uh, give me a little more leeway so I can assign some more RAM to my hosts so they run a little better. Um, overall, though, once everything's running, it runs fine. Uh, it is a home server, so it's not u utilizing any type of production environment, obviously using you know uh, low-end uh, residential or consumer-grade hardware. You definitely wouldn't want to have that in a production-style environment. Um, that being said, okay, great. So, that's listed. So, in here, uh, you're going to see your hard drives. So you have a, a DVD-ROM drive, which is my Windows image. And then um, you have uh, you know, the C drive. So obviously, we don't have the new hard drive showing here yet. We need to use the Disk Manager. So manage disk space to actually, you know, uh, create the new disk partition. Oh, wrong one. Chose the wrong one. So this is what you actually want to choose. Create and format hard disk partitions. So you should see the new virtual disk in here, which we do. So Inside your Windows now, you're obviously have to allocate your disk. Obviously, if you have you know uh, Linux or another operating system, you're going to need to allocate and format the disk inside that host operating system, just as you would anything else. This is this particular, in this particular case, Windows. So I'm going to do new simple volume. Doesn't need anything special. Um, we're going to use the whole space, the whole disk. Uh, we'll assign a drive letter. In this case, I'll assign it Z. Um, let's see. Format this using NTFS. That's fine. Quick format. That's fine. And finish. So it's going to go through. It says it's formatting the drive. Healthy partition. Now, if you go back to your your Windows folder, you would have a new drive. In this case, Z. It's empty. And if you look, it's going to be you know 25 gigabytes. So yeah, 24.9, 25 gigabytes of space. So essentially, um, we have now added a VM, 
I'm sorry, we've added an additional uh, hard drive into our ESXi host that we can use for data stores. And in this case, we took some of the space and we actually assigned it to one of the VM machines. And then we went into the VM machine and activated the space, this case using Windows 7. Um, but again, any operating system would work, you know, just the same way. You just have to follow that particular operating system's uh, procedures for adding a, a new disk into an already installed and running operating system. I hope you guys found this uh, helpful. Uh, thanks for watching and have a great day.